Welcome back, my foreign friends, because Paul is... I'm just going to call it your second home. It's going to be hard to leave here, Brad. And and where exactly are you, Mr. Thurat? Well, <laughs> well, I'm in Paris, um, up the street from the Gare de Lyon. Uh, this is actually an area of the city I've only been to a couple of times, and we've never stayed here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like the rest of Paris, it's freaking awesome. And uh, and when do you come home? Tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. I thought it was tonight for some reason. Yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you, are you sure about that? Because you weren't exactly sure when you were leaving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is tomorrow night. I wish it was. Well, well, that is good. Are you having a, you having a good time over there? Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. We've kind of done more sight type stuff than I would have thought. But actually, my... My wife is starting up a, a home swapping blog. I think I mentioned this to you previously. Mm-hmm. She kind of wanted to get some up to date photos of, you know, the Eiffel Tower, you know, all the, all the actual sites. But, yeah. uh, you know, for me, it's mostly been, you know, walking around the city with walking like 23, 24,000 steps a day. And wow. Going to cafes and stuff. It's okay. Nice. Well, good, Paul. Did you uh, did you happen to see what Microsoft announced this morning? <laughs> um, sort of. I, I saw that there was. I saw the name of it. I literally don't know anything about it. But yeah, I well, saw that you wrote about it. <laughs> yeah, that's really so. all that you need to know, to be honest, because Microsoft announced what's called Project X Cloud, which they showed off in a video back here. And it's everything that we knew was coming. Um, honestly, I think the biggest announce. There, there's two announcements. One that it's called X Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and right. and the second one is that public trials will start in 2019, and they showed off some fancy servers that have Xbox boards in them, and that's how they're going to scale out, and they're they're testing all this. But we really still don't know a lot about it. And um, they came out with a big bang this morning, and are all happy about it. I, not to be pessimistic on this, but didn't Google announce something like this last week? And then here's Microsoft saying, "Oh look, don't forget about ours." Here's Here's ours coming too. Because yeah, Microsoft originally I, announced this at E3. Sometime early this year, Google had an announcement about cloud gaming, and I thought, you know, these guys are going to try to snatch us up from under Microsoft. Because when you think about it, they are one of the companies, one of the few companies that does have the infrastructure to pull it off. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, okay. I mean, if, if this is, if this caused Microsoft to go a little early with the announcement, I'm cool with it. I, They've been kind of talking around that they're doing this for you know the past year now, so mm-hmm. it's all good. That picture you have behind you is that what I think it is, like the Xbox controller with a phone attached to it? Yep, and that's what they were talking about. They said this will work uh, at least in current form with any tablet or uh, phone, and then you you use the Bluetooth controller with the device, uh, but clearly not an Elite controller because it doesn't support. Bluetooth. Yikes. Um, Yikes. And then they're also, they're, Paul, this is interesting because we've heard of um, some maybe foldable screen devices from Microsoft. They've also worked on a uh, digital on-screen overlay, so you don't actually have to use a controller. And okay. it'd be, it'd be, it'd be kind of interesting if you saw like uh, what we currently know as Andromeda or whatever. The bottom screen would be the digital input controller and the top screen would be um, the streaming portion of it. You know, it's yeah. just... I mean, if that's true someone has finally found a use for Andromeda so that's good no that's um, that's exactly the point is that hey this is actually a real reason why they might eventually ship this thing someday you know I've been talking about this screen attached to an Xbox controller for a long time I'm sure it dates back to Xbox 360 days but mm-hmm. I've always sort of thought that that kind of thing would be popular and uh, there it is I mean uh, you know there are all kinds of ways you can spend time on a plane, you know, watching movies or whatever, but yep. it'd be really neat to be able to play games that way. Yeah, it would be, and it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for them to kind of ship this thing. Um, but, Paul, if you remember, I said, hey, remember uh, the next-gen consoles coming in 2020? And everyone's like, no, no, that that's way too soon. Well, if this thing is doing public trials in 2019, I think they'd be gearing up to launch that in 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. And then so a couple other quick things here. Surface headphones. Microsoft announced availability this week, um, not last week when they had the event. But anyways, uh, mid-November, I think November 15th is when you can pre-order it. And then November 19th is when they will actually ship. So 
Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird that they didn't announce that last week and then they waited until today. I, but they, There must have been something, uh, some reason we don't understand why they couldn't. Uh... Yep. And so um, keep it short today because I'm sure Paul's arm is just... Uh, how, how's that arm doing, Paul? <laughs> you know, my legs have been getting a real workout this week, but my arms are kind of... Uh... Yeah, they're a little jellyfish-like right now. Maybe we'll just read a, a chapter out of War and Peace while you uh, hold the boat up. But, um, Maybe I should get a selfie stick. Please do, and please have your wife or daughter uh, take a photo of you using that because that would just that would be the piece of resistance of um, your French trip. Right. <laughs> so... All right, folks. Well, that's going to be a real quick episode today. We'll catch you right back here from the streets of Paris tomorrow, right, Paul, or somewhere over there? Maybe. Yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. So, actually, what time are we doing this? It's what, 11. Yeah, well, hmm. we could do it actually, earlier. Okay. Um, yeah, because we have to get to the airport. So, maybe we'll be at the airport or something. But uh, probably, assuming I'm not in transit, uh, I should be able to do it. Oh, the very famous and probably, well, I haven't been there in a couple of years, but I'm still assuming terrible Charles de Gaulle Airport. Is that where you're? Oh, so uh, you'll be delighted to discover there's an even more terrible airport here called Orly. Uh, mm. which is a, an absolute <laughs> just dump. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nicely designed because you can't actually take a train from here there to Paris. Uh, there's a kind of a convoluted series of steps you have to take. Uh, or you can get in a car. And yeah. uh, I don't know if you know this. This is a fun fact. Um, if you look at Google Maps, uh, you'll see, like, green and yellow and red. Mm -hmm. And actually, as it turns out, traffic can get worse than that. There are two more colors. Those colors are purple and black, uh, oh. both of which are almost permanently on the ring road around Paris. So, uh, yeah, lots of good options there for getting out of Orly. Fantastic. Or Orly. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to that adventure tomorrow, and uh, we'll catch everyone here, right back here next. Ugh, I screwed that up. We'll catch everyone right back here tomorrow on First Ring Daily. Have yourselves a good one.